Welcome everyone to this Force Friday. Uh, today, we're gonna to talk about one of my favorite subjects actually, which is caricature. Uh, we're gonna focus on faces today, but caricature isn't just about faces. I think it's really much bigger of a subject than that. And we're gonna talk about that, right? So uh, before we get into it, as always, um, let's introduce our other Force instructors. Uh, we've got Mertunjay. How you doing, Mertunjay? I'm doing good. How are you? Ready to push? I'm doing Yes, I love pushing. <laughs> yeah, good times. And how about you, Swinley? Yep, ready to stretch some faces to their extreme. Yeah, ones. exactly. Let's see if we could break each other's faces today. <laughs> I'm going to go as far as I can go, <laughs> see what happens. <laughs> kind of scares me. That, that gets me excited. <laughs> so let's see. <laughs> when I start getting nervous, that's, that's when it's good. <laughs> So it's like, um, this is like the skydiving of drawing. Ex that's exactly right. This is right on the edge when the guy tells you to jump and all you're holding on to is the edge of the airplane. And you got 10,000 feet between you and, and death. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, as I was saying at the entry here, uh, caricature doesn't have to be the face. You know, it's about, I think it's about anything. And uh, me, uh, Swanley and Mertunjay have talked about this in the past, you know, couple of years, even. Uh, I, I think in our world, we think about it as opinion. You know, it's like we're trying to further the opinion of something. And I, I try to describe this as best I can in the books. Uh, there, in the books, there's like a drawing of a scale and it talks about truth. And uh, in the scale, it, you know, when you push something and you push it the right way, you're leaning into its truth, into what it is. And by doing so, to me, what I think you're doing is you're presenting more of that truth. The challenge with doing something like caricature is that if you're wrong, then you're really wrong. It's like, if you're right, you're really right. If you're wrong, you're really wrong, right? So that's the challenge here is like this sort of fine edge of something like drawing somebody's face and saying, you know, have I pulled out more of them to present or emphasize um, these ideas in their face and who they are, right? Did I make it more of that person? And like I said, if you go wrong, it derails, right? And you go like, oh man, this doesn't look like them at all. And the other challenge on that note to caricature and drawing someone's face is we're so acclimated as human beings to look at each other's faces, it's so easy to judge, like, does it look like them or not look like them and so on and so on, right? So with the human body, there's a lot more room if you wanted to, to cheat because it's a little more ambiguous and it takes, um, it takes a higher level of, uh, of skill to discern uh, specificity of one person's anatomy to another, finding all those nuances and subtleties in the human body itself. So there's a, there's definitely more room there to, to sort of be off and play around than there is in somebody's face. As you can see here, this is a caricature I did of Jeff Bridges probably two years ago that I posted on Instagram. And I was talking to a student about drawing the figure and emphasizing. And that came over to this Jeff Bridges caricature that I did for him in a mentorship meeting, um, which I'm actually pretty fond of. I like the way it came out. Um, I hope you can see the sort of simplicity and some of the ideas I used to create this. You can see underneath here, uh, let's see, brush. Uh, you can see I, I have this shape going on, right? So I kind of concaved his head on both sides and convexed. The apex is about right here. And then I have this shape living on top of that shape, right? Which gives me his hair. And then all the stuff that's happening inside, which is sort of a combination of line thickness and variety to create form and shape and force, right? And try to keep all that stuff uh, going, you know, um, on uh, to, to preface this, I, I have done caricatures professionally for over a decade when I lived on the East Coast to just make extra money. Any of you that want to make a decent income, a decent living, and you do like working with people, or you're terrified, it's the thing you want to get over, go into caricature. I mean, it, it was a pretty awesome gig. I learned a lot, not only in drawing um, and drawing fast, forming an opinion quickly, but also just talking to people, all right? Talking to people, being able to entertain and have conversation. 11 years of caricature is like a master's course in all of those things. So I highly recommend it as, as a job. If you do it on a business standpoint, I didn't think I was gonna go here with this, but 
I would not necessarily recommend doing caricature where you go to like a fair on your own or a boardwalk. Um, where I did well was I would always connect with ad agent, not ad agencies, with entertainment agencies. And, uh, and they would hire me out and I knew I was getting paid by the hour X amount of dollars. And that would range anywhere from like 90 to like $150 an hour. And I'm talking about the like mid nineties, early nineties. So that was really good. Um, when you go out on your own on like a boardwalk and you're charging 10 or $20 a caricature, you, you might walk away that day with $20 or $500. Like you have no idea. Right. So the risk is more on your, you know, on you. Anyway, that's what I recommend. That's how I did it. And it worked out really well. It was always great income, you know, on the weekends to go out and work for, you know, weddings, bar mitzvahs. Um, I did an NBA uh, party one, one summer in New York on a pier that a, a boat actually crashed into while I was there. So that was, that was an interesting day. <laughs> yeah, very interesting. Um, but yeah, it's fun. You know, I think it's fun. It's fun. And, you know, it allowed me to get more, um, more risky, you know, more aggressive and, and really start to enjoy it. It was hard in the beginning, pretty scary, you know, in the beginning and you have people watching you and you have to like go through that. But uh, towards the end, it was a fun job, you know, really fun job. You could also do it as an illustrator, you know, and talking about that, you know, I have some of my favorite illustrators. I think we've talked about in the past. Here's some caricaturists some famous caricaturists. Two of my favorites off the top um, are Kruger, um, I just think this guy is awesome. I think I've brought him up before because these are more of his like rendered pieces, the photorealism level of painting that's in here. Quite honestly, I don't really care about that. What I care about is look at the shapes and how far he exaggerated. And then it looks even more absurd because he did paint it realistically. I mean, this is middle image of James Dean. I mean, look at this forehead. It's like a cliff. Like I feel like I'd, I would be hanging off of his brow, right? It's like Mission Impossible 2. <laughs> <laughs> right like tom cruise hanging off of an eyebrow here right and look at this giant thing over here i mean it's like a huge tidal wave falling over the edge of this cliff right with this hairdo it's just it's just awesome right it's, it's cool to look at it's not easy to do you know to do this kind of stuff you really have to get over your own personal fear to push into this and look at this george lucas i mean how fantastic is that you know, he's got his neck lined up right into his face which is so awesome and the hair right lucas has a, such a huge thick head of hair and it's humongous, right? It's way bigger than his face, his little face, but you accept it. And you accept it even more in a weird way because of the photorealism. So it's just like this dichotomy of the weirdness of the reality of the render and yet the shape design, the proportion is all so out of whack, right? Just love it. My other favorite who I've loved since I went to school in New York at SVA because I used to pick up Rolling Stone magazine was Philip Burke. Um, these paintings are huge, by the way. Uh, they're usually sometimes five, six feet tall by three to five feet wide. They're huge. Uh, and, and I remember being in school, looking at his stuff and just going, this is all craziness. Like the eyeballs are a little all over the place. Nothing's lined up right. And yet it looks like the darn person. And I just couldn't, like, I couldn't wrap my head around it. You know, I just loved it for that, you know, and his colors are crazy too. You know, so today I'd be like, man, the, the colors and where he goes with color is insane. Yet it all like comes together. You know, when you really get sensitive and looking at people's faces, I think Burke recognizes every little subtle nuance and just draws it and pushes into it. You know, every one of us, our eyes are not the same. One eye is usually open a little bit more and the other one's a little lower, right? There's differences in our eyelids and stuff like that, right? You got Bill Clinton here. Look at like the shape of the mouth and the pull into one side of the lip versus the straightness of the other and the slight curve in the chin, the overall shape of the head, right? You know, Conan O'Brien, it's like everything is, no one's face is like, well, I'm sure there's some people's faces that are perfectly straight and linear, but the more interesting ones are out of whack, <laughs> right? And we want that. And I think Burke, I think Burke celebrates that uh, idiosyncrasy level and knows how to push into it, you know? So to move forward, because we're going to need time to draw, um, the three of us pushed out a quick list of like how we're going to be talking about today. So, you know, when you deal with a caricature, you really want to try to get some kind of sense of the personality of at or attitude of the person. And you want to build your own sensibility of sensitivity of having a response. Like, oh, my God, their head's really skinny. Right. I have to hold on to that. They have a skinny head. And I love that. It's, 
And where does that come from? I, I think that comes from using yourself as the quote unquote zero state. You know, I have a wider head and I have a very chiseled blocky head. If someone's head is, feels narrower than mine, I'm probably like, oh, it's really thin. If it's wider than mine, I'm like, oh my God, it's really wide, right? So it gives me a place to go. And I want that. I want that sensitivity to, to, to push, right? To, to know, to celebrate what is different than me, right? Which is awesome, right? Um, and the why that is therefore really important, right? So I gave you part of the why. I think my hypothesis here is how is it different than you, right? Um, but more why. It's like, well, why is that? Well, oh, I see the proportion of their face is different. Their forehead is short and wide and narrow and their hair is big and poofy or it's really curly and this person's straight. Their mouth is really big. Their mouth's tiny. Their nose is long or wide or short, thick and thin, right? These are all proportional things. There's a weird angle in their mouth. It's not straight, right? You would assume that everybody's face would have perfectly horizontal and vertical angles. It's like, oh, this is skewed a little bit. One side's bigger, one side's smaller, right? You're looking for those Philip Burke idiosyncrasies, right? Um, so you wanna not only be able to have a reaction, but as an artist, you wanna be able to deconstruct your reaction and understand like how you got there, right? So that's where these skills come in, right? And those skills are no surprise, right? We're talking about force and form. And there's lots of things underneath the buckets of those guys. And shape. Shape, if we can really get shape to work, like we talked about the other week, shape, shape can actually give us forceful shape. And it can give us structure, like I did the sketch of the eyebrows last week. And today, specifically, I want to bring in the bounding box. The bounding box, I think, is kind of like one of the bigger new tools I want to discuss a little bit today. Um, and at the end, like I said here at the bottom, shapes can create the forces and the structure at the same time, right? So let's talk about the bounding box real quick. So here's a box, right? Just a simple darn box. But believe it or not, everyone, this is like one of the first things that I see when I look at somebody's face. Um, and let's talk, before I even go there, look at this. What I have here is a square, right? So it's a flat shape. It's not in perspective. It's just a square. So a square means it has equal sides. I'm not a fan of the square, right? The reason I'm not a fan of the square is it's not, I want to say it's not pushing a clear idea, but it is pushing clear idea. Its idea is everything's even. And what I want is uneven. I want disproportionate, you know, unless something is so damn even, which is so super rare in nature, then I'm going to have to finally push into the evenness. But if I can, I'm going to be very, 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 very sensitive to how is something not a square, right? I really want to find that. So for instance, if I have this square and I look at somebody's face and it's like that, that subtle change tells me, oh, the head's longer height, you know, tall wise than it is height wise than it is width wise. I'm going to push there. All I need is a little bit and I'm going there. You know, I just need a little bit of the flavor of that. I would take that and do this to it. If somebody's face is like this, I'm going to do this to it. That's pushing into the truth that I was talking about before. I have to first understand proportionally what their forehead is, you know, what their head is. I could fit somebody's face shape into this. You see, say somebody's forehead looks like this, right? It's pretty long and narrow and wide. If I'm going to do that and I see that I'm going to push it into this. And then I decide like, how far am I gonna take it? Well, am I gonna make their forehead like that? Can I go that far? Is that gonna break it or not? I don't know, right? That's what I'm gonna try. I wanna see how far I can actually go. If somebody's nose, right? Let's say we're talking about a nose. Maybe their nose is like this. I'm like, well, maybe I could take it to this. Can I take it to this? Can I take it to this? Can I take it to this? Now that's the length and shape of their nose, you see? To me, it's like the Terminator. <laughs> You know, I don't know if you remember the first film and when you could see the tech from the Terminator standpoint, it's like having these boxes and squares and stuff like all over the place. I know this sounds crazy, but believe it or not, I have a phase of my drawing when I'm drawing that goes into that, where I see these shapes go back and forth and back and forth. And I'm aware of like thick and thin and proportions and how things work. And the Jeff Bridges drawing is done very much like that, right? If we j break down Jeff Bridges, you can see that shape wise, it's like, wow, that's really tall and thin, right? So he's like that. 
right here let's uh let's undo this for a second and make this a pixel base all right so i might do this and then you'll notice his nose in there right i'm i'm like starting to play with like well the nose is like this the mustache is like this the forehead's like that you see um, it's like this abstractions it's like his goatee might be like that so all they are is simple boxes but if you can control that you can control proportion and you can control the por proportion off of reality boom you are in you know like all of a sudden you're in the zone of having fun with exaggeration it, it's such a damn simple tool right so powerful um so any questions or thoughts from you guys before um we get started uh, someone asked in the chat about um how to use deconstruction for caricature well yeah like i said i think it's about abstraction that's why caricature is a challenge for most artists you know it's the de the the deconstruction in proportion i would say is a really big one the deconstruction in what is their their attitude and how does force attribute to that and then there's probably the most skill based one which is the construction and perspective of it too especially if you're doing like a three quarter view right now all of a sudden you need to know form and like we looked at philip burke's work lots of mass and solidity you know so hopefully we'll help answer that today as you see us go through the the fun of uh caricaturizing each other's faces. <laughs> yeah. Let's see, any other questions? How do you use character also structure in general for design? I've been going to character in the last months. I love it. So pleasant surprise seeing you discuss. Okay, cool. So let's get to it. I think we, I think uh, Mertenje is going first. I'm going, no, Swenley's going first. I'm going second, Mertenje last today, right? Yes. All right, it's all yours, Swenley. I'm gonna stop share. Let's see, okay. I'm starting with our superstar Mitsunji again today. <laughs> nice. Okay, let's see. So I'm going to start with, uh, with a soft touch, you know, just to get things going. So in speaking about the bounding box, like, first of all, like I look at, at the picture and I have a certain response, you know, like I feel that the shape of his face right here is uh, kind of long and narrow. You know? So that's the first thing, the first idea that I would start with. You know, I notice that it's a force shape. And it has a straight curved design to it. Okay, and it feels like his eye line is like quite close to the hair. So I want to push that. You push that eye line up here. And then in terms of structure, I want the center line and a sense of a turning edge. You know, it's looking slightly down at the head. So I'm using a wrapping line here to show that. Wrap this some more to show the perspective. And in terms of the neck, like you barely see the neck here. It's quite, for me, it's quite small. It's kind of receding in space. Okay, let's see. So we have the ear. And the ear feels quite fluid. So the nose would be around here and I see the shape of the nose. So I keep having these reactions or responses and to all the aspects of the drawings, you know, sometimes it's proportion, sometimes it's force or form or shape. Okay, let's see. Let's see the shape for the hair and it feels kind of like a wave to me. And it's hanging, wrapping around and you can see a little bit of that other ear here, this round, this feels quite straight. And I want to make sure that I have a curve on the other side to contrast that and keep things fluid and forceful. You know, so here's where the turning edge comes in handy because now I know that I'm drawing on 
the side plane. Okay, and here we have the shape of the shoulders. Actually, this feels very round. So I could simplify this. shape like that and the smile like when I look at the shape of the mouth I feel like there is a lot of applied force to this side like pushing it up super simple shape okay so now I'm going to switch to another brush and start going into some of the smaller forms like here's the nose and i really want this shape right here and i'm also looking at the structure i think Mike covered this. I don't know if it was last week or the week before. I was seeing kind of this uh, ball shape here for the nose and how the nostrils fit into that. Uh, here's where a bit of knowledge of anatomy comes in handy because there is like this uh, bone right here at the brows where the nose fits and then you have the uh, eyebrows so I'm looking at the expressions now, how does that feel to me like what's the idea the eyebrows feel very rectangular And look at the relationship between the eyebrows. This one feels like it's pushing up slightly. Now I can see this shape right here. So the eyes feel rounder at the top and straighter at the bottom. And make sure that he's looking at us. get some more like the anatomical structure in there. And I'm still constructing and building, you know, I don't want to go into any kind of a clean up too fast. Also I get a turning edge of the face right here. That continues into the forehead. Ms. Wanley, while you're drawing, uh, I thought maybe we'd have the conversation we had before we started today to share with everyone. We were we were um, we were talking about the word exaggerate, uh, and not to be picky, but I am picky. <laughs> I want to make sure we <laughs> use the right the right words. Um, I looked up exaggerate, and it said, and it didn't feel right to me. Uh, so we looked up the definition and it's usually about making something greater or larger than what it is. And uh, my point here is caricature is not necessarily exaggerating, you know, versus abstracting or even boiling something down to its essence, right? To its most purest form. 
Uh, and that leads into abstraction, right? You're, you're simplifying down versus adding, adding to. So that's why I've been trying to use the word emphasize today. I think what we're trying to do is emphasize ideas, right? In order to emphasize an idea, you have to have an idea, right? So you have to have something you're focused on. Like one of the things that I would get asked a lot when I was doing caricature was, oh, you do caricature? So is that where you like exaggerate a feature? You know, do you usually go for the nose, <laughs> right? <laughs> and no, and, and I yeah. don't do that. I, I used to hate that actually, you know, it felt like the cheap way out of doing caricature. Um, I think caricature is knowing how to emphasize the things that are most important that get you to the essence of somebody's face, the abstraction of their face and knowing what is not and what is. And it's, you're like a composer, you know, you got to play with what needs to br be brought forth and what needs to be dropped back and how to get to the abstraction of that. What is the core of it? And, you know, we'll all try to do obviously our best on that today. I think when I draw for you guys, I'm going to try to do lots of caricatures, actually, each one of us just really super fast. So it's good. Swanley's doing this. He's doing more of like, here's the steps, right? He's going through soft touch and he's showing you construction and shape and so on. I think I'm going to purposely do the opposite. I'm just going to like crank out a bunch of caricatures of each one of us and show you change, 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 change. And like, how does, how am I getting to those places? Which one feels right? Which one doesn't feel right? And just get as simple and abstract as possible, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's great. You know, so here I'm really starting to shift. Like at the beginning, I was really paying attention to shapes, but I started to shift more towards force, you know, let the shapes kind of like emerge out of that, you know, and all of a sudden, like the drawing starts feeling more alive, you know, like once I approach the eyebrows, from a force standpoint, you know, I automatically changed the shape and the expression started to come more alive. So I think that's like one key thing to remember, like force is at the basis of everything that we're doing. You know, sometimes it's easy to get caught up into the, into the other aspects of drawing you know, and things can start to stiffen up. You know, and this idea of shape and proportion and bounding boxes, it's not just drawing people's faces and being able to do, you know, make a living doing caricatures. Uh, this same thing comes down to character design, right? And then you take the bounding box to somebody's body, right? And how's their body broken up? It comes to vehicle design. It comes to doing a concept painting, right? Where are the bounding boxes within that painting? What do you want to, what do you want to state more clearly? And what do you want to have fall back? And it's scale, right? It's scale, it's proportion. It's like one of the most powerful tools that you can have at your disposal. And it's such a simple one. And that's what makes it so profound, right? It's simplicity is so strong. Yeah, yeah, indeed. And like the underlying, again, like principle of all this is function. You know, you want to draw the caricature based on how the person's face work. You know, if you start thinking about function, then the drawing stops working. You know, like it's kind of logical, but it's really, again, easy to forget that. All right, you got about two more minutes. Man, time really flies when you're having fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this is coming along nice. Let's see if you can add a bit more to the smile here. Now we can tone in some shapes. So this would be the first pass, and then you can continue doing many, many more iterations and see which one 
works best at the end, you know, to capture the essence of the person and the ideas that you initially had. Force for Matinje. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> So I keep checking the expression. I'm going over it from a force or function standpoint and trying to feel like what's the connection between these two, these two eyebrows and let the shape emerge out of that. So maybe I want to push this one a bit farther even. Okay, like push the asymmetry, like this shape is like thicker and this one is somewhat narrower. Okay, I think time's up. I'm already, thank you, Swinley. Right. Yes, you're welcome. All right, let's rock and roll this this party. <laughs> okay, this is my nervous laugh, everyone. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. All right, I'll start with Machem J two. I'm just gonna plow these out, man. I'm gonna try to crank out a whole bunch of stuff. And just see what happens. Let's see, brush. All right, so here we go. Um, I don't know if I wanna talk, I'm just gonna draw. All right, I'm gonna draw and I'll try to spit out whatever <laughs> I can in the midst of all of it. And here, we, I'm gonna make believe I'm at a party, right? I'm at a, I'm at a yeah, I'm at some kind of, some kind of party and Matunje comes down and sits down, right? So I'm like, wow, this, I, I wanna draw this like really tall and skinny. All right. So it's my first stab. We'll see. I'm going to give I'm going to try to do this more than one time too, okay? Gonna be really fast here. Almost drawing. I'm almost drawing. How do I say this? A little more from the gut. I'm. I'm bringing obviously my years of like drawing in here. I, I can't not do that. But I'm trying not to worry too much about it, and just see where it gets me. All right, so here's the first one. <laughs> now, let's keep his shoulders down here. Caricatures of little bodies and big heads, right? <laughs> Always. <laughs> Always. So there he is. He's like, hey, look at me. I'm an artist. I have a pencil. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. I can draw. Yeah. Really, really shows my innocence, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, let's get his black hair in here really quick. So here's my first pass. That probably took about, I would guess, about two minutes, three minutes. Somewhere around there. And already I'd have this next person sitting down in the chair, right? But here he is. All right, so that's my first. Let's try another one. I wanna just see like how nutty we can get here, right? 
I want to keep going for the long head. So my abstraction for him, he's got a longer, thin head, all right? Kind of rounded chin, but long, thin head. I want to play, maybe we play with the hair on this one, okay? Uh, I'll do one with a lot of hair and then one with like no hair, right? So let's just see what works better. So here I'm going to make the hair a bigger, a bigger deal. So what am I doing? My measurement there is I'm going to push it further and make the shape bigger. You see? And then it's got nice thick eyebrows. I want to play, I keep playing with that. Now I just doodled it out. I scratched it out like that, but it was in the form of a shape. I did this in my mind. I drew a shape and then I drew that. I want his eyes. I keep, I'm torn about his eyes. Part of me wants to make him like little cartoon sparkly eyes, like, cause he has this really happy, innocent look about him, but they're not humongous. So I'm, uh, maybe what I do is I increase the size of the eye iris, but I keep the eye small. Maybe, maybe that's the fix here, right? Let's try that. I'll make the iris huge in a little space, right? And his nose is smallish to me. Oh, smallish. And I want, it feels horizontal to me. The ellipse feels horizontal. Right, it's like that. And he has a great smile, right? Just a huge grin. So that's easy to play with here, right? We can, that's like a cakewalk, really. It's such a simple thing to, to push off of. I'm trying to get the force line in here too, by the way, the way I'm drawing, right? I'm moving and I'm trying to keep things active and the strokes active. So all that's just kind of happening automatically. That's, that's a given. Well, Mutunjay paints too. So in this one, he has a paintbrush. <laughs> <laughs> that is so good. Thanks. That's what 11 years does for you. <laughs> 11 years of this. So I like that. I like this one a lot. I like the, the tall hair on him. All right. Let's just see how that, let's see if that really works. I'm going to try to just tint this really fast and then get the darkness in there. Normally I would take more time with all the coloring, but I just want to get some tint. Could even throw a little bit of shadow in here and in here, and then under the nose, the bottom, I mean the top lip, under the bottom lip, under the neck, and there we're done, right? So there's Mutunjay. All right, last one. Um, let's do one where, uh, what was I gonna play with? So let's not make the hair big. Right. I want, again, I want really long head and I'm going to keep the hair high. See if it works or not. His eyebrows, I keep making the eyes pretty high to the hair. You'll notice it doesn't feel like, uh, I don't think he has a, you know, a, a tall forehead. Let's get the eyebrows in there again. Eyes. Very cartoony. The nose, I think the nose is always a winner. I think the eyes and the nose, I think I have that down. I don't think there is a better like solution there really. So I keep going back to my, my choice. We could just make his mouth huge here. So here, the whole drawing is his mouth, right? That's a happy mitunje. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh God, look at those. Those are some choppers right there. You have a very yeah. happy dentist. Very, very happy dentist over there in India with Mutunjay. Also need a big toothbrush for those. <laughs> yes. We'll give you a toothbrush for this one. <laughs> Maybe he found Albert. Was that's why he's so happy. Exactly. He knows where Albert is. Yeah, so you have to draw Albert on his hands. So happy. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, Albert. Albert is still out in the wild, waiting. He's like hiding behind a tree, starving at this point. Waiting to be found. Exactly. So here we go. As Mutunje said, he's got his hand, and this time, he's got a humongous toothbrush. <laughs> So there you go, right? So there you go. So there's my three, right? I never changed the face shape really. I just broke down the proportion in it, my abstraction of the shaping inside of it. So what's going on, right? But behind the scenes is I look at this, 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 you see? Uh, they're all just me chopping up the proportions in there within those in the, within that construct, I play with my line, the expression, the feel I get out of the person, all the other stuff that I was talking about. But right, look at the jump we made from this drawing down here to here, right? So uh, yeah, so there's three of Mutunje, right? We got this one. We got my first one and this one, right? All different. I think they all kind of feel like you. I don't know if I have a favorite. You guys have a favorite or any of you guys in the audience? This was number, you know, label it number three, number two, and number one, right? Yeah, I'd love to hear from all of you guys what you think your fave is. I'll try to shrink this down. Three is the best. Three? <laughs> you, you started laughing once I got to the mouth. I knew that was your fave once I got there. <laughs> All right, so there, there's our, there's our Mertunjes, okay? All right, let's move on to Swenly. I'm gonna see how much time I got left. I don't think I'll get to me, so let me see what I can do with Swenly real quick. You're yeah, a lot I think harder. It's yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, I think it's good to uh, mention again that it's about ideas. You know, if you sit there and think I have to make a caricature, then the pressure is on, you know, but if yeah. you just focus on what are my ideas about this phase, then you just go. Yeah, exactly. So that's what's hard. I, the ideas on you, for me, are not as clear. It's, it's harder. And you're in a three-quarter view. I want to play this up. Mm -hmm. I think that's something I want to grab mm -hmm. onto, right? And the hair, you know, sure. We, so we have this, like, fun hairstyle that you got going on here. I'll play with that just a little bit, you know. Forehead's not pushed bigger or small. It's kind of, like, in the middle. So it doesn't feel like a, something I want to drive on. Eyebrows aren't super thick, right, or thin. They're kind of there, so hard thing to really pull on. I'm gonna probably pull on the roundness of your nose, right? So let's do that. I think we can pull over there. You got, you know, you and you know, you're all smiling, all of you, right? You and Mertunje. So we've got this kind of half, you know, moon shapeish kind of eye going. So this one, you might take me a few shots, but let's see where I start. So this, the angle here is right, this play I have, but I can tell right away as I'm moving down, it's not, um, it's the right idea. Uh, I, I'm gonna come back to it. It needs to be lower. I think it's more like this. All right. Let's see, you have a nice thick smile too here. Let's get that. Your, gr and your grin is not as gigantic as his. <laughs> you know, it's more wide. It's kind of more wide and horizontal, right? So everyone, if you're wondering what the hell I'm doing, I'm looking at this, you see? So it's like, hmm, maybe that's something I can play with in another pass. Maybe I'm gonna make that even crazier, right? But I'm looking at that. Smallish ears. I think I would make your ears small. This kind of bumps out a little bit, very straight back here, thickish kind of jaw, right? So you can see very, the, the shape of Swenley's head is something I really have to like get, right? So there's my first pass. It's kind of like my learning pass. Now, if I was on a job, sometimes learning pass is it. That's what this is. This is what the person would get from me. They don't know that I could push it further, but I didn't know enough yet to get it further. So this is just what they're going to get, right? little forehead kind of thing going on. So there's number one, right? 
Let's see, what do I want to do next? Let's get rid of this. It looks like glass is almost there. I'm just going to tinker around. Let's see where I can, I'm going to just, I'm just going to push like crazy here. All right, so here's a crazier shape. I'm going to lean, I think, more heavily into your cheeks and your mouth. You know, I think that's my opportunity now that I'm looking more clearly at it. I think that's my shot, my chance at Swenley. <laughs> Let's see, next week it'll be, hi, this is uh, Mike uh, on Force Friday all by himself. <laughs> Matunjay and Swenley have, have now left. They, they were so disgusted with these caricatures. <laughs> it's a one man show now. Let's see here. <laughs> I should have thought of it earlier. Like, damn, what if I've hurt somebody's feelings today? I don't, I don't even think of that. I just have so much fun with these caricatures. You know, I should just only be drawing myself. That's it. Nobody else here. Right. Yeah, someone asked that in the chat, by the way. How do you keep from offending someone? Yeah. yeah. You don't. That's what you're hoping you do. <laughs> right. <laughs> Now it is true. I mean, when you're working professionally and you're doing caricature, that, that is a very real thing. And the, the, one, the one block of people uh, I can say I had to worry always about the most, and this is where all kinds of racism and sexism I'll get called on, out on and I'll end up on like Fox News tonight, um, is uh, older women, right? Older women like in their 50s and above then I had to be really careful, <laughs> really, really careful. Cause they, you know, they're the ones who are like, my eye doesn't look like that. My nose is not that big. It's like, it's a caricature lady. <laughs> I'm not here to do like the most gorgeous portrait of you. The whole point is to like play, you know, like relax, calm down. We're, we're trying to have fun. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trying to have fun at your expense. Like go sit down, relax, you know? Yeah, that was not easy. Teens and stuff were always really great at it. You know, little kids, man, kids loved it, of course. So let's see, you're, you're kind of head. See, here's where things get tricky. I, I, wanna, I wanna get good shape and simplicity. I don't wanna get over, over crazy here. And here's another one. Yeah, so you're, I have to say, you're a lot tougher for me. It's a three quarter view, and it's hard for me to grab something that I just know is such an abstract thing. I can really play with it. Not bad. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, right, I mean, let's... my essence is there. So it's good. You know what? <laughs> my essence is in the sketch. So it's good. <laughs> <laughs> the essence. <laughs> let's try one more. Let's try one more, and let's just see. Oops. This guy's like, I'm not going anywhere. Um, I'm gonna try something a little different. I'm gonna try a totally opposite, opposite way, which is sometimes I used to do character and I would start small. It's like the opposite of hierarchy. I would start small and just try to get like the eyes right. And then that would allow me to really mess up everything else, you know, like really mess around with it as much as I wanted to. Remember folks, I'm moving fast here too, right? This is like hair raising pace. So I'm not having time to adjust and make big fixes and stuff like that. So sometimes I would work this way. There was, a, there was maybe a few months I remember I was so just tired of doing the other way. I would try out different ways and I would do this where I would start in somewhere tight and small and then work my way out. Sometimes it worked. I have to say, sometimes I got some good results. It was a little bit more Philip Burkish, you know. I'd be looking for every little thing. 
and try to work my way around like that. And the trick is, you know, having an opinion about every darn thing that you end up drawing, right? So I want to say a super fun first Friday. Yeah, I'm having fun. <laughs> I, hope everyone, I hope everyone else is, but I am. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun. Good. So this is a little bit more of a safer approach, right? You can see it's a little more realistic, just a little more real than the other ones. All right. So let's command T, let's zoom these out. It'd be fun to see what you guys think. Let's see what I did. All right, so we've got, uh, we've got three, two, one. Which one do you like the most, Wendley? I like the first one the most. I like the, like, the big, simple shape for the head. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think I like the first one best also. All right, I have, I'm gonna give myself one minute. I'm just gonna do a quick one of me, and then I'm gonna hand this over to Matunji and we'll go over a little bit. I wanna see if I can destroy myself here a little more. I'm gonna try the same process. See, so here's, you know, you guys were asking about abstraction. Subcons is asking, like, here's my abstraction, right? I'm like straight in the back, like this, this chin. I want to push my chin and make this, I see a very long horizontal block in there. This is very thick. I see that. And then I'm kind of squinty up here. I'm going to put that high. My nose is like really protruding out. I might even break the, um, the edge of the face there. I think I want to do this. My nose is very pointy here. Interesting, I didn't get to the eyes yet. Usually I do that very early, but I just want to, I'm dying to get to my nose and my mouth here, especially my nose. Can't forget the snaggle tooth. <laughs> we talked about last week. All right, and then the very squinty. That's a pretty good one to me. That feels like me. All right. That is there's a fast one to me. All right. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. I like that yeah. it feels forceful and fresh and energetic too, you know? Yeah, your face is one big force shape. <laughs> exactly. It's just a big straight to curve, right? <laughs> All right, let's hand this over. Hope you guys had enjoyed that. <laughs> let's hand it over to Matunje. We'll give him a shot, having some fun. Right. Yeah, it's too much fun. I feel guilty. So much fun. <laughs> I'm not going to draw as fast as you guys, but hmm, let's see what we can do here. <clears throat> All right, so let's start with Sunli here. Hmm. So I usually like start with, uh, sometimes I go like opposite of hierarchy is sometimes I want to start with, hmm, let's say the nose. It, it gives me like more of a starting point and then I can play with like the shape, like I can go as crazy as, as I want. Hmm. 
So let's crank this up again. You know, I'm just gonna go for my immediate reaction to what you know I'm doing. So let's see, the nostrils are pretty big. <clears throat> Nose is see like it's a triangle. Yeah. Uh, so almost like this. He's got no eyebrows here. Uh, He's got no eyebrows, like here, as you can see, it's like completely gone. <laughs> I'm gonna do this. As you can see, he's like pretty thin, right? Pretty slim. Uh, let's do like simple eyes. Uh, try to give like eyes some, some kind of expression <laughs> to make it good. All right, really small eyebrows again. Just trying to think of like shape, shape again. So nose here. All right, I'm gonna make it small again. <laughs> My old habit of drawing really big. All right, here we go. So smile now, as you can see, like what the this opposite hierarchy gives me, it's kind of like this, so I can like make it big. If I already make like a face shape, sometimes it like, I'm just like bounded and I have to raise again. So yeah, this is, this is useful sometimes. Mm, all right. So trying to like, trying to like fix this, how big I want the smile here. As you can see there's like this dip, pretty big dip that I'm going for. It's like more like this, and then the lips are pretty, like, he's got a big smile, and the lips are also thick, so I'm going to go for this. I'm um, again, like, um, as with the others, I'm just, like, trying to use, uh, like, force concepts, right? The bounding box, I'm seeing, like, lips as how wide or the tall it is. And then I'm using force line, obviously, right? And as I said, you know, immediate reaction is what I have like most fun with. So <laughs> I have, I just attend like a caricature class like once uh, for like a week. So I'm not really experienced with it, but hmm, seems like I can do some of it. Uh, this is a pretty small teeth, so I'm gonna make it even more small. And this is what we are talking about. This we can. <laughs> That's a nice it. little find. <laughs> uh, the, right. the, the larger front and the smaller sides. All the way, I'll have it, but it's cool to see in the photograph. It's a great thing to grab. It's a little detail, you know. Hmm. It'll be interesting to see how you try to get to the a silhouette for Swan Lee's head, like you said, because you're starting from the inside out, which is another way of doing it, you know. Mm -hmm. See where this ends up taking us. Yes, again, uh, that's going to be the immediate reaction <laughs> to, to his face. All right, so I'm going to shorten up. Now, see, he's like, uh, obviously, he smiles, so obvi uh, his mu muscles is bulging up a lot. So, let's see, this. And then this and this is very unique as mike was saying that like, what is the most unique thing is like this you know <laughs> so i'm gonna go for this i'm gonna make it larger because see like the diff distance from here to here is pretty big and you can then play with it this is pretty blocky like very cut out kind of thing and this uh, this detail is important here you know make some hairs here <laughs> Need very strong jaw muscles for that mouth and chin. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's right. To control that mouth, you need <laughs> you need some strong jaw muscles. The masseter, massive masseter muscles. <laughs> yes, that's a function. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Swanley is very good at eating. He's very good at chewing. <laughs> I'm gonna make it like really flat here. See, like. His hairline is kind of really flat, <laughs> like really small. 
Hmm. I'm, I'm still going to go with your idea, Mike, is like the straight thing for the yeah. at least the hair, you know? Yeah. It seems pretty obvious and like even more straight. <laughs> and let's see. Uh, so I'm going to like play off with this angle here. Um, you guys see this, this angle here? I'm going to play off with that. Let's choose this. I'm not going to keep it like too straight, but here's your jawmasome <laughs> for eating. <laughs> awesome. Uh, all right. So let's see what it's it like, is. That's like, it's like Schwarzenegger level jaw muscle. <laughs> <laughs> Arn <laughs> Arnold is envious. Yeah. <laughs> You must be training them in the gym. <laughs> exactly. It's like a little, one of those bite things, you know. You just sit and chew. I'm going to the gym to work out my jaw. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If ear is doing this, like, it's more like pushing against that uh, silhouette. With it. So, yeah, I mean, that's more like this, you know. Yeah, these are my immediate reactions to Smelly's place here. Uh, yeah, it's really good. Hmm? Yeah, awesome. Thanks. Yeah, I think the thing that this brings to my attention for all of you is, you know, like all of us have our methodologies and our responses. And to me, this this idea of how we're drawing caricature today, today this is not a far step from drawing force in the figure. You know, you have to see and understand the powers in the body and here you're having to like respond and see the attitude and proportions the forces in somebody's face you know and they correlate you know so if you're having a hard time with caricature and pushing you know pushing the pose maybe you're really really good at doing a study and then that's how you're approaching your figure drawing but if you want to really add some oomph to those drawings you need to you know go beyond and be able to see through the filter of force and get that power in here you know why don't you try doing one more um with mj sure so i'm gonna do yours okay um all right so i already got one i was just practicing <laughs> <laughs> nice. awesome yeah, yeah. I, I look like a crazy old fisherman or something <laughs> <laughs> uh so i'm cool. gonna keep sticking to this idea of uh kind of like this shape you know? it's like going mm -hmm. uh, Pinching like two words and then outing. All right, so let's do this. Hmm. So here I can, because it's in my idea, I can take like this kind of shape here. Mm -hmm. Pushing nose, uh, pushing the nose out. Might be, might be out of the faces uh, silhouette. But... Hmm. That's my layer. <laughs> All right. That was a so, warning. It said, "Don't push too far." <laughs> the computer was like don't push it it's gonna hang up <laughs> hey, don't get fired with OJ. watch out that's all right. right here's the opposite the opposite is doing one of me <laughs> that's all right. all right yeah he left that's why he's not here this friday on his own accord yes <laughs> and i love it i love when people draw crazy faces in me Every so often when I'm traveling or teaching a workshop, some student will come up after the workshop with a drawing of me. It's, I, I love that. It's so hysterical. Mm, you got like very squint eyes. <laughs> yeah, very squinty there. Super, super squinty. Make sure I'm calling these laughing lines. <laughs> yes, <laughs> very good. Uh, you've always been a quick learner, Matunje. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Got really light eyebrows and... This one is pretty dense, looking dense. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right. Maybe doing this. All right. Pretty big smile. Pretty big smile. Mm -hmm. so I'm always taking this. Right. Then mm -hmm. hmm, I want to like push this this face because you can see like the distance is pretty high here. I like the sense of perspective you have in this. It's not only, um, you know, you're pushing shapes, but there's a lot of form. It's very Kruger, like we talked about today. You know, yeah. my nose is like in our face and I feel like I'm receding back to my eyeballs and I'm coming out to my mouth. You know? Yep. 
I'm gonna push your vampire too. Oh. Yes. <laughs> I sharpen that at night. Take out the nail file. <laughs> All right, you're doing pretty good. <laughs> That's funny. Say, so I'll obviously I'll give it like a little bit more time, but for now, just let's complete this. Mm -hmm. All right, which I need, or right, I'm gonna keep switching this idea. So this is like, I can see like a little bit, I don't know, a yeah. division. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> just a little bit of the butt chin is in there. <laughs> <laughs> a little Kurt Russell. Yeah. <laughs> Michael Douglas. Hmm. It's a small view. All right. Hmm. So coming back to this idea of pinching upwards and then going stronger at the bottom with bottom lip. All right, there's small ear here. I can make it like very shaky. It's very forceful there. <laughs> hmm. I don't know like how to put this, but maybe like a small. I'll make this like a little bit smaller to show the like how it's holding up to the ear. Mm -hmm. The ear is gonna be more like this. All right, your hair getting destroyed. By this. Yes, again, crushed in there. All right, making the cat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the challenge to this, just like drawing the human body, is you know as you're manipulating and changing and pushing from reality, you have to make adjustments over and over again, because there's a domino effect, right? Like it all has to work together in the end. And that, that's pretty hard, you know? I hope I can do some justice to your face. So. It's awesome. Yeah, it looks fun. Greenberg, if I got time, I'll write Greenberg here. <laughs> but my only note, my only, I normally don't say anything, but my only note I would watch out for here is you have my forehead here and you have the hat here, and then I would get this to connect. Oh, right. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's better. Right, right through, right? Yeah, exactly. Right. And there we go. You know, a little hair coming out. Like this. <laughs> the shirt. Yeah, that's fun. There we go. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, guys. Well, thank you very much. I hope you guys had out there as much fun as Swenli, Mertunje, and I had today doing caricatures of one another. Um, we will see you guys next Friday, right? Go do caricatures of yourself and your family members. Grab a mirror, you know, draw yourself. We showed you lots of different techniques today from drawing within and working out to working out, you know, coming from out and working in. And we talked about the bounding box. Be aware of proportion. Proportion pay, plays a big role in all of this. And, uh, and stay forceful with the lines, you know, dynamic, um, confident line making, and just work fast, you know, do it over and over and over again. Don't get too precious with it. It's caricature. So you're pushing for ideas, you know, and you want to experiment. And the more you can iterate and the more flexible I think you are in the bounding box and experimentation and expressions, the more powerful you become as an artist, right? Because you have the skill to keep doing trial and error, trial and error, trial and error, you know? All right, guys, I'll see you next weekend. Have fun and have a good week. Take care. Bye. Bye. Yes, you guys, bye-bye.